In this tutorial, I'm going to go over COM operations for the Garmin G1000. And we can start by identifying the region where the communications frequencies are located, which is at the top right of the G1000 panel. And then we have the communication button cluster over here, which allows us to change frequencies, swap between frequencies, adjust squelch and volume. Now, here we can see the active frequencies are always on the inside and the standby frequencies are on the outside and we've got this frequency selection box or tuning box over here which can jump up and down to uh, modify which frequency we want to adjust at any given time and we can hit the center of this COM button and it jumps between the frequency with this little double arrow. Now notice that both of my frequencies, my active frequencies, are white. And what that means is that there's no COM selected right now. On the COM audio panel, that's where you have your buttons where you can select COM1, COM2, and pick which one you want to listen to and which one you want to transmit on. When you actually select one for, lis for listening and transmitting, one of these uh, two active frequencies will turn green. The one that's green is going to be the frequency that you will be talking on when you press your uh, microphone button on the flight control yoke. In addition, there's always the, with two frequencies, there's always the possibility that you can select to listen to two different frequencies while talking on one. So the question becomes, what if I'm listening to both frequencies and somebody's talking on the two different frequencies simultaneously? the system is going to give preference or pre uh, preference to the frequency of the radio w with which you have transmission also enabled. So the radio that you can talk and listen to will essentially win and the one that you're only listening to will become muted if both frequencies have communications going over them at the same time. Now the next thing that we will uh, look at is if I am listening to a frequency because something is being tra uh, transmitted to me, so basically somebody's talking to me in the airplane and I can hear them, I'm essentially receiving the signal. So I will have a little RX over here telling me I'm receiving the signal because I can hear them. Um, next to the frequency that the signal's coming in on. If I press my microphone button, the push to talk button, and I start talking, what will happen is I'll see a little white TX appear. And as long as I'm holding down that button and talking, the COM microphone enunciator will flash. And that COM microphone enunciator is going to be the little light that's above the in the audio panel which al allows you to push which com you want to talk or listen to you'll see that button that light flashing above the button I can't show you that on the sim because there is no simulated audio panel so that's not located on the primary or multifunction display it's on the audio panel now again I can manually tune my frequency so I just turn the outside com knob and we can see here I'm selected on COM2, and I can change the frequency, the large digits on the outside, the small digits on the inside, and I can switch by pressing the inside button here, and I can swap to the active frequency by pressing this little swap button, and if I press and hold this button, the 118.9, or I believe it was, just changed to 121.5, and it flipped and put it there automatically for me, so that in the case of emergency, Maybe I'm nervous, or maybe I've just been out of practice. I haven't been flying for several months, and you know, I just happen to forget the emergency frequency. No problem. Just hold down the button, and it will switch automatically to 121.5 for you. And you can see below here it says emergency abbreviated right below the button, just as a reminder. They also, there's also the volume and uh, squelch button over here, and if I press the squelch button, what it will do is turn off or on the automatic squelch. 
what the automatic squelch is doing is it's going to basically get rid of unwanted static noise but when you turn off the squelch by hitting the button what's going to happen is you're going to hear uh, absolutely everything that gets transmitted on that frequency so you'll have to go to the audio panel and to turn the knob to adjust the squelch level if you have the squelch set to manual. We can also adjust the frequency, the volume on the frequency of the comm radio by turning this knob so that we can make it louder or softer. And we can do that for either one independently of each other. Now, another nice little feature that we have is the auto tuning ability of the communication frequency so um, what we'll do is we'll start by looking at the nearest page and let's say I want to listen to um, the information for Gaithersburg Airport what I can do is I can rotate the FMS knob so that it's highlighting this field on 122.85 now I could do it the hard way. I could go up here and I can start rotating this until I get to 122.85 or if it's highlighted I can just hit the enter key. Now I got 122.85 over here on the standby. Swap it over and it's ready to go. So it's very fast and effective if you understand how to do this auto tuning feature. And uh, this is not exclusive to the nearest page pretty much anywhere you see a frequency and you can put your cursor and highlight it you can do this uh, this process so now let's look at the multifunction display what we can see here is I'm at Gaithersburg let's go to the nearest airport list so here's nearest airports what I can do is I can hit the menu I can go down here to select frequency window hit enter that puts my cursor over here for me and I can pick any one I want on this list. It's highlighted, I've got a cursor, hit enter. So here we got 121.85, we did that last time, let's pick a different one. Let's do the Unicom, so 123.075. So look here at COM1, it's 121.5, I've got this highlighted, hit enter, boom. 123.075, switch it over. I've now got my uh, Unicom on there and you can make your appropriate radio calls. I could have also, keep in mind, hit the frequency soft key over here and that would have taken me to this menu uh, just as easily. In fact, it's a lot faster to do it through the soft key because it takes less keystrokes than it does by going through the menu. At the end of the day, all that matters is that you're able to highlight that field. And I can also, I can also do this if I go to the uh, waypoint page here, I've got airport waypoint information. Once again, all I have to do is go down to this list. Let's try the menu. I'm not sure if you can do it through the menu, but let's double check. No, you cannot. So get out of the menu. What we can do is highlight our cursor, just manually scroll down until we get to this list of frequencies. And just the same, we can pick any one we want and just hit the enter key and then swap it over. So we can pretty much do that anywhere there's a frequency. Might even be able to do that. Um, you could do that on the VOR page, uh, but that would be uh, a frequency that would go swap into your nav, not into your com. So that'll be on the tutorial uh, for, for a different point in time. Last but not least, let's look at frequency spacing. So what's the discrete delta when I tune, turn this knob, the fine tuning? Right now we can see it's going every 25 kilohertz. So 325, 350, 375, 4. What if I want to space it even finer than that? What we can do is go to the auxiliary page, go to our system setup. Now all we do is highlight our cursor by hitting the FMS key. We're going to rotate to go across these fields and it should come as no surprise 
that I want to adjust my communications frequency. So I go to this box that says communications configuration. Very intuitive and straightforward. Here it says channel spacing. That's what I want to change. I've got it highlighted. Rotate the inner knob. Now, if I want to, I can go in units of 8.33 kilohertz, hit enter to select it. Now, get rid of the cursor by hitting the FMS key. And now when I rotate the outer FMS, I can go back here to my different pages if I wanted to. We'll go back and just stay at the auxiliary page for now. Let's rotate the COM frequency. Now look at my spacing. It's much finer. 48, 485, 49, 5, 505, 510. Remember, before it was going in every uh, 25. So let's go back to our original setting because let's face it, you don't need to sit here and spend, you know, 15 minutes going through every um, 8.33 kilohertz discrete change to get to the frequency you want. It's going to be a huge inefficient waste of time. So we'll go back and just set this back to the 25 kilohertz setting. And now when I change it, let's get rid of that soft key. When I change the frequency, we're back now to 7, 7.25, 7, 7.5. And we should go to 8775 and then 8. So that's all there is to it. Uh, very straightforward, very intuitive, but also very important to know. The main thing to get out of this is that you can use the enter key when it's highlighted to quickly get the frequency you want. It'll save you a lot of time in the cockpit, and it's that simple.